electronic music history and synthesizer history sort of took a left turn. After the war, there was a lot of war technology left over, sound producing war technology, function generators, etc. The composers that were looking to create something completely new, a new style with new timbres, started taking all of this technology that was now abundant and applying it in unique ways, creating new recordings, new compositions, new styles of electronic music, and hence, electronic music, capital E, capital M, was invented. Now it was all about timbre design in a studio setting, as opposed to having a specific device that you would play like a musical instrument to create the timbres. So in a way, it was kind of a more clinical approach to timbre design, and it led to very, very abstract and unique styles of music uh, in the composers that were doing it, whether it was at the WDR in Germany or uh, the French uh, Musique Concrète movement, movement where uh, recordings were made of actual sounds and then they were manipulated. It was a fascinating time that moved towards studio design and away from specific technology designed to author timbre. That all changed in 1955 with uh, a couple of fellows um, Harry Olson and Herbert Villar create this device they call the RCA synthesizer. Now the RCA synthesizer was the first instrument to have the, term, the name synthesizer and it was an incredible device. The initial, the first version had 12 oscillators I believe and the second version had more I think as many as 24 I can't remember. But this device was a studio device that had synthesis capability, but it wasn't a musical instrument as such. It was actually a musical studio. So what you would do with the thing is you would program it to do musical performances. You would control its timbre, you would control the performances. In many ways, it was the realization of what composers had been waiting for for 50 years, an electronic device that could be in control of musical iterations, notes, uh, meters, etc., as well as timbre. This thing did it. And it was amazing. However, the interface <laughs> left a little bit to be desired as it was basically the same as a computer keyboard. It was a punch card operated device. To make the punch cards, you had to type things in on this keyboard. So there was kind of a giant barrier between the musician and the realization of the composition. And you can't really call this device polyphonic. And this is where polyphony gets confusing. It was capable of making a recording of multiple notes stacked, harmonics, you know, and actually uh, many different tracks of note iterations. However, how this device achieved polyphony was laborious and it was more consistent with a studio concept where multi-tracking is not polyphony. Having multiple tracks is not the same thing as polyphony. This is a major sticking point. If you're going to talk about polyphony, polyphony is really about performance. And so you have to have a performance interface for your synthesizer really to be polyphonic. Because this device could output multiple iterations of notes, it could play a whole chord, but it did so using a multi-tracking method, basically uh, bouncing down. Uh, it would record a bunch of different tracks and then it would uh, mix those tracks down to a single track. And it did all of this originally on lacquer discs. So basically it would make a record of of the sounds and then it would bounce those down to a single track on another record and eventually it used tape but it was it's the most laborious way of coming up with multiple notes that you could probably possibly imagine so uh we can't really call it polyphonic because polyphonic doesn't make sense in that the the possibility of a thing multi-tracking you can do that with a monophonic synthesizer which this essentially was the RCA2, Mark II, was a, a monophonic synthesizer that made polyphonic recordings through multi-tracking. 
But it did give us the term synthesizer and it did sort of cement the idea of what an instrument that employed synthesis should be capable of and should look like and how it should operate.